saying thank you very much indeed. Madam President, in concluding this ceremony, let me add my own personal congratulations to every one of you on this very special occasion. Graduations, as I mentioned at the beginning, are a real highlight of the academic year for the SOAS community, for our students, for our academics and our professional services teams, for our board of trustees, partner organizations, and our local community partners. And of course, for all the family, friends, and colleagues of our graduates. We take immense pride in the strong community we have here at the school. It is one of our defining characteristics. Everywhere I go in the world, people remember their time at SOAS. Students, staff, our research associates, and honorary members of the school are passionate about our world, about the connections between cultures and communities. They want to understand what unites and what divides us and have a desire to make a positive difference. For me, SOAS is a special place for a whole variety of reasons, but let me just share a few. Because of the quality of its scholarship, its high level of critical engagement, and its impact on the way we think about our world. You all will continue to play a part in that. This graduation is also a very special time, has, has already been mentioned, since it's 100 years since the school was founded, with our Royal Charter being awarded on the 5th of June, 1916. Our very first graduates were awarded their degrees in 1920, having entered the then School of Oriental Studies in the spring of 1917. Over those hundred years, SOAS has changed and developed enormously, but always with that global lens and regional focus, with an emphasis on understanding context and a curiosity and determination to see things differently. Over the coming years, and as events in the past few months in Britain and Europe have demonstrated, our specialist regions will continue to assume ever greater significance on the world stage. At SOAS, our students come from over 130 countries, our staff from over 90. We have more European students and staff than almost any other UK university. We're outward facing. Our students and staff see themselves as part of a wider world, open to different cultures, approaches, and ways of thinking. We see ourselves as promoting understanding and building bridges between different parts of our world. It's in our DNA. That's the kind of thinking our world so desperately needs going forward. So much of what we are being told today is about fear of diversity and difference. At SOAS, we know that it's about diversity and inclusion, opportunity and change. That is why I know that SOAS, with its unrivaled expertise in the Middle East, Asia and Africa, will continue to be so important to scholarship and public discourse across the world. And why your grounding in your area of study will be a springboard to making a difference to the world in your lives ahead. And part of the difference we make is through our academic success. And this has been a year of considerable achievement. 2015-16 saw the school rise 50 places in the QS World Rankings. At subject level, five SOAS subjects were ranked in the UK's top 10. Development Studies, Anthropology, Politics and International Studies, Linguistics and Modern Languages. And a further three, History, Law and Media Studies were in the top 20. We've also secured over 10 million euros this year for research from the European Union to support new research on conflict in the Horn of Africa, multilingualism in world literature, 
and the ancient religious texts, respectively, of Zoroastrianism and Hatha Yoga. And our students and alumni are equally impressive. This year, Deborah Smith, who submitted her PhD in contemporary Korean literature at SOAS, won the Man Booker International Prize for her translation of Han Kang's The Vegetarian, an extraordinary achievement. And Maro Itoje, a second year student in the Department of Politics and International Relations, broke onto the world stage as a forward in the England rugby team. I have to tell you, I've now become a rugby supporter. <laughs> He's now played in two major series in Europe and Australia, and the team remains unbeaten. SOAS is also defined by its many strengths in languages, and there have been many examples of language excellence in the past year. Once again, our students triumphed at the Chinese Bridge competition, and Jackson Swinho won the grand prize while Lawrence Hayes was awarded first prize. In the same competition, senior lecturer in Chinese, Zaziu Pang was also awarded best coach of the year. And earlier this year, six BA Arabic students had their prize-winning independent study projects published by the Department of the Near and Middle East in recognition of their achievements. During their year abroad in the Middle East, undergraduate students studying BA Arabic write an impressive 3,500 word piece in Arabic. The essays illustrate what SOAS students can achieve after three years of Arabic instruction and acknowledges their hard work and effort. So what does it mean to be a SOAS graduate? Well, first and foremost, today does not mark the end of your relationship with SOAS. You're now part of a fantastic community across the world. One of an estimated 100,000 people who have received their education here in the past 100 years. There's a SOAS graduate in every country in the world and an alumni chapter in a growing number of these. This October, we will be having a celebration of the SOAS centenary across more than 50 cities, with SOASians meeting, sharing their experiences of the past, and talking about what we can do together in the future. Wherever you are, we hope that you will join in. And if you're going to a city where an event is not yet scheduled, you might organize one. Beyond that, whether you go into politics, finance, academia, business, the arts, charity, volunteering or teaching, wherever life leads you, you will be an ambassador for SOAS in the years to come. We will follow your careers with enormous interest. For some reason, new SOAS graduates can sometimes be hard to reach, probably because you're all out there doing amazing things. So please help us to keep in touch with you by giving the careers or alumni team your contact information today, either in the gowning area or in the marquee. We want to support and engage with you throughout your careers. Many SOAS alumni also want to give something back, for example, through acting as a mentor for current students or sharing insights or career experiences. We also hope to see many of you back at SOAS to enjoy the wide range of centenary activities that are planned in the coming year. We'll be hosting a number of extraordinary speakers, including award-winning artist and social activist Forrest Whitaker, food writer and author Claudia Roden, Nobel Peace, Nobel Peace Prize winners Mohamed El Baradai and Wale Soinka, and human rights activist Hina Jelani. And please do come back to our alumni weekend, scheduled for the 9th to the 11th of September this year, when there'll be a range of events taking place in our new building in Senate House. Finally, today's a chance to thank all those who have supported you through your studies. So before I close, I would like to, you to join me in a round of applause for your parents, 
relatives, sponsors and friends, all of whom have helped to make your achievements possible. I offer all of you my very, very best wishes for the future. Have a wonderful day. Wear your SOAS gowns with pride. I hope you don't get too wet. Thank you all very much.